Um, uh, this is the uh, April 11th, 2018 regular meeting of the North Bennington Graded School District Prudential Committee. Um, we'll start with uh, introductions, starting from Lori. This is Lori Elwell, the district clerk, and Mary Rogers, treasurer. Tim Schrader, board member. Kim Crow, board member. Maria Skelly, board member. Ray Molyneux, board member. Matthew Patterson, board member. Um, that's our call to order. The next order of business public comments, but we have no public other than ourselves. <coughs> We'll go to the third item on the agenda, finance, treasurer's report. Uh, Mary, would you like to speak to that? There was really nothing unusual um, for the month of March, nothing that I see unusual in April. They, we did, however, get um, the, the $7,400 plus for a check that got deposited for um, in, in last month for um, Liberty. That, that, that from Liberty Mutual for that um, uh, claim. 7533. So, yes, yes. Okay. so that is, that is in and uh, uh, tracked also on the budget status report, the same way okay. I reported it. Okay. So that was, did they give you a breakdown of that? You've um, given me a breakdown, I, I think. There, there was uh -huh. quite a stack of documentation. Right. Um, with the check that okay. is in the SVSU files. I did not copy all of that for myself because I know where it is should we yeah. need it. Okay. Well, and then I, I know there was that email that they talked about. That we were overpaid some, on the one plan? Yeah. But I'm not sure we were, I don't know. Well, it's still- Because there was a 20, they deducted an extra $2,500 for deductible one time and then they paid us back? Yes. So but I haven't tried to figure that out yet. According to, well, I kept a little spreadsheet of just the invoices and then the other couple of checks that we got mm -hmm. back. And we still have more out of pocket than $2,500 times one or two claims. Yeah. So I'm yeah, that's not mostly quite sure whether something just doesn't get reimbursed or um most of that claim got reimbursed yeah paid. most of it did yes i think we we are still missing <laughs> money on the music room claim and mostly that has to do with the fact that i haven't been able to get the contractor to talk to okay. liberty about why there was so much painting okay and I but we did get we did get reimbursed for the instruments Yes. And uh, we got reimbursed for most of the carpet, mm -hmm. but they thought that uh, since we replaced sheet carpet or roll carpet with uh, squares, which are more expensive, that they wouldn't pay for the additional cost of that. Right. They just paid replacement. the replacement, which the is replacement. probably why then when you track it, it's not exactly everything yeah. less $2,500. Right. So I think we're, whatever bill charged us, we're out at the moment because I don't think they reimbursed that pending his telling them why the painting is so much. They ask that and they ask about the carpet. I explained the carpet. Okay. He hasn't called him. I've sent an email to him saying, you know, please talk to this person and tell me when you do. And there's been, that was before I went into the hospital, so I haven't heard from him. Okay. Um, all right. So do we get a uh, state support grant this month or? Sometime this month, April? April. Or May. I don't recall whether it comes in April or May. Yeah. Because um, 
based on ending account balances, you know, we're going to be fairly low on funds here until it does come. The bank balances are still sufficient. With these checks that we're going to pay authorized tonight? Yes. Okay. All right. Good. Because we still have um, ta the, the tax revenues. Okay. Great. Any well, other questions? By we'll have else? to look at clearly by the time we get to, um, you know, next month we may want to, well, next month is, you know, this is April, mm -hmm. next month is May. We right. want to start, maybe take a first look at estimating where we're going to end up, and then we can do that early June where we end up, and then we will have to have that typical second meeting in June. Okay. Because we can't do without the, uh, the, tax. the tax anticipation. Yeah, right. We set up the financing mm -hmm. for next year. Mm -hmm. Great. <clears throat> Otherwise, I think we're good. Um, warrants, I, I noticed that uh, our little bill to powers for refreshments at the annual meeting was memorialized twice but it's the same check so i don't think it was no it's not patented. duplicated no yeah and otherwise uh the only other question i had was the amount for <coughs> shaftesbury tuition is seems higher than it should be because i I think the tuition rate is 11.5 for four students, and uh, divided out, that's 15.334, and this is 15.640. I don't remember. Was there something in with our first payment that was irregular I to them? I don't have a recollection of that, and my binder where I would be able to find right. it all. Okay, I, I sent an Jeff a, an yeah. email. Um, I just sent him an email today asking him, you know, to explain yeah. it. Okay. Um, maybe it would be nice to wait to release that check until we get the explanation. Yes. Um, let's see. Agenda. What else we got here? Well, that's um, budget status report. Does, does anybody have questions about that or want to speak to it? Okay, consent agenda. That's warrants and minutes for March 14th and March 22nd facilities meeting. Thank you for the parties responsible for those two sets of minutes and then the warrants that we were just speaking of. So, um, you know, we could be informal here and I could just call the question, are we all in favor of paying, of adopting the consent agenda? Yes. Aye. 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 Okay. That passes unanimously. Super uh, policies. So, Maria, would you like to speak to policy 4400, safety and security of employees? Um, if you have anything to add to it. They added one word, which was healthy. And it, I think it was basically in order to address environmental um, allergies. Right. So, um, and for the public, there's one word in the next one that got added, which was timely. Timely consideration. <clears throat> timely consideration. In the, um, in the 7300? Time, timely. Timely, yes. Yes. Okay. So there's not that much that was changed. Is there a definition of timely? Well, the reason that it was chosen was because, because there, there was no. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Safety and security. I did look this over. The so is this for warning? So where did where where's the, the first word? one we're adopting? We already went over forty four hundred. Are you looking for forty four hundred? Yes. Uh, okay. So healthy. 
Where did they add healthy? Got a line number? Working on it. Okay. Yeah, uh, well, I don't. It's in the third paragraph. Safe, clean, healthy, and attractive. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. So um, this is an adoption, right? Yep. So I'll entertain a motion for adopting policy 4400 safe and, and safety and security. Safety and security of employees. Are you looking for policies? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll move to adopt. That's okay. A we have to do Second. Thank you. Um, any further comments on 4400? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of adopting policy 4400, safety and security of employees. Say aye. 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 Okay. 7300, is this? Public participation. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a warning. Yeah, it's a warning. So um, policy 7300, public participation. <laughs> Sorry, participation at board meetings. Um, as far as I can tell, really there's only one change to strike out of reserving the right to eliminate public comment. Is that right? Correct. Uh, For uh, meetings posted as an executive session. Right? right. You have to always have it. You don't have to have it on your agenda, but you have to always have it. And if there's nobody there, then you move on. You don't have to. Right, and, and this is just a kind of a formal way of meeting the requirement so no one comp complains about it. Yeah. Okay. And um, the procedures, well, this is why I wrote you about this. Yeah. Because the procedures don't seem to allow, I mean, it says the chair shall facilitate public comments. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's fairly discretionary about how that goes. Yeah, I don't think, that, I mean, I thought you were asking where they were allowed to be. And I don't think, right. that, I think that's chair's discretion. Yeah, I was asking, because we sometimes, if we have public about a particular issue, we'll, since we never have a big crowd, we ask them to the table and let them speak. So, yeah. And comment when we're talking about it, which is appropriate, I think. Mm -hmm. And I can still do that under this policy. Yep, definitely. Okay. So, I did, uh, any other comments about this? The Shall we warn out, it? The strikeout creates a grammatical error in the following sentence. You also, the school boards also, yeah. also should go away since there's now not two things since you struck out the first one. Got it. Yep. <laughs> No idea how long we spent on this. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you need to know. Them. You needed someone who wasn't in it. What line is it? It's, uh, 16. It's, 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 yeah. 16. Got it. It's going in my notes. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's like a college professor kind of spot there. Don't keep reading because you'll start to <laughs> pick it all apart. Yeah. I'll make a motion to warn policy 7300, public participation at board meetings. <clears throat> I'll second. All right. Uh, further comment? Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, then I think the last thing is uh, last month we worked on our policy on payment of tuition for resident students, uh, and we adopted a revision to it. I sent you all a copy of it as I rewrote it. The rewriting is very simple. I just removed some language. And uh, let me see here. Where is it? So, in P 
paragraph one under implementation, I, I removed some language from the first sentence so that originally the, the last version had that it allowed uh, a legal pupil to be a, a kindergartner and the kindergartner could be age turn age five by the end of the year of the school year that you were in. Uh, so like December 31st. So I removed that language. And since we're already on this other <coughs> SU policy about kindergarten <coughs> eligibility, uh, we revert to that policy, which says they have to be five <coughs> by August 31st. Uh, we don't have to adopt this, I suppose, but we could ratify it as written if you so choose. So ratified. Yeah. Does it need a second for ratification? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, kind of a sense of the board, so yes, that would make sense to have a second. Okay, second. All right. Um, all in favor of same? Aye. 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 So now back to agenda. We are now through policies. We're to the superintendent's report. And he's he or designate is not here. So we will skip the superintendent. We'll go to chair's report, which is kind of a mishmash. Um, I would defer to Kim to speak to the bathroom project because she's been doing all the work. So, um, <clears throat> so I we contacted three contractors. Two have come and seen the project. One has um, declined. The project's too big for what he feels that he can handle. Um, and we are waiting for the quote from uh, the second contractor. And that contractor is also lining up meetings with um, Plumber and the partition um, salesman who sells um, the partitions for the bathroom stalls. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and we're going to get a few different estimates from this contractor, meaning work that we could, so we can look at it two ways. Um, if they demo the project or if we demo the project. Um, the quote from the plumber that they like to use that they think is fair and reasonable and then we'll get an outside quote from another plumber as well. Um, let's see. Some different materials. We're getting different quotes on um, vinyl versus ceramic tile. Um, We're also getting quotes on two drawings. I don't know if you guys remember, there's two different drawings. One, um, one, it's a little variant on the first drawing. I, has everyone seen both of the drawings of the bathrooms? Um, one was the first drawing that had a urinal. It would be that drawing without the urinal and two sinks. And then this, and then the other quote is the original quote that we all agreed on in the meeting with the, um, facilities meeting that we had. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's about it. Um, the advantage of the first set of drawings, if I might include, yeah. is that it has two, two uh, sinks. Oh, that, right. Yeah, right. two sinks. And um, we did, I, I put out quite a few calls to quite a few different contractors, and um, people were very kind but busy. <laughs> yeah. And then Ray has a, a call pending right now to a contractor. I sent an email an to email. Uh, John Wellspeak to see if he's interested. And I think there's still the guy who did the uh, tile work down at Powers. Right. There's two. There's two did more you, did you contractors call contact that him? I have not. Okay. So that can happen too. Okay. So Thanks so much for doing all that. Mm -hmm. We jumped right on and ran with it. That's yeah, great. but it's we're in a little bit of a standstill right now. But yeah, we we kind of need to make up our minds about 
walls and floor mm -hmm. right to help to help this process and um, one of the things I can tell you is what is the um, name of like the the it's not vinyl siding but the name that I can never remember for that siding um, for the wall like oh uh, the FRP FRP um, that's fiberglass reinforced panel I, I don't know why I can't remember that um, versus you know PVC there are PVC right panels. I can remember PVC but anyway so um to do ceramic tile remember how we, tile. Were, yes. we were asking about um we asked Silas would you have to lay every single piece down well right. Eddie and Brett said no that they do come in squares it's not like you have to do those little placers or whatever right they come on a mat yes and mm -hmm. the difference between the um those two products would just be a thousand dollars he did tell me that vinyl and the ceramic versus the ceramic okay. and we we did Even have account for accounting for the labor because he said that that vinyls that it's really it's much expensive more, yeah it's more expensive than oh. anything and Tim Newbold said he'd prefer the tile correct yeah I just worry about tile in an old building like that and how you know if it's going to well off the walls yeah <laughs> you know I think I think that there has to be some concrete under there to handle tile this is the floor we're talking about yeah floor and yeah. and the walls and the walls the walls you wouldn't need it because you could stiffen them with a uh, cement board. Yeah. But um, Is it and it's vertical. Sheet Sorry. Is this all the sheetrock going to be redone? Except the ceiling. Well, up up to the, the ceiling, ceiling right. but not including the ceiling. I, the I would do the ceiling, but I'm a little uncertain what's up there, <laughs> because I think it's part of this this center section that has no attic it they when they blew cellulose in here they dense packed it mm. so it's like going blind you're just stuffing it and stuffing it okay. and Ray I think another variable will be when we have this um, the the person from the partition company come to tell us how we can hang yes. the partitions so can right. we hang from the ceiling and then mount it on the walls right. to have the floor, floor free or if we're feeling like this, if that's a no-go, we have to mount on the floor. Yeah. If well, not knowing what you have up there for structure to hold, because those I, I've looked into those um, ceiling down mm -hmm. panels, which are great. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I th I think we might work. have to build like a a curb down that would take advan you know right. advantage us by grabbing onto all the joists. Spread spread the load. Right. Spread the load. And then um, they were asking me, do you think solid Anyone's. partitions, not hollow? Sorry? Solid partition material? I'd be more for that that high density. Yeah. Okay. I would too. Okay. Because uh, you can screw metal. into it everything. It's <clears throat> the fasteners stay pretty pretty secure in that. Okay. I okay. And it's uh, harder to damage. And, won't rust. Well, yeah. Because you can get it anything from cheap steel to mm -hmm. powder coated mm -hmm. to stainless mm -hmm. to. Yeah. You know. And that's why we need the salesman to come and go yeah. through the catalogs like this thick and he can see our budget. Right. Talk to us about options. So we need someone who can go, th you know, has the catalog in his head. Basically. Right, exactly. Yeah. Talk to us. And then we'll end up with curtains instead. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um. Oh, and lastly, about that, Tim Newbold has been attending most of the meetings with the contractors, and he is very willing to take some of that work this summer, painting, whatever mm -hmm. jobs to help reduce the cost. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Um, other projects, well. We need a list. We don't really have a list, but I've, I've heard that there are other projects being mooted about, and I know that there are some. Right. So we have parking lot out here and trees and trees. Um, but in doing this and working with um, Jim Coonrat and ground, <coughs> he presented me with this wish list, um, and so then I had him take that wish list to Tim, 
and asked him to sort of triage or prioritize this list and then get give that list back to us. And so that's what we're waiting on as a final list from him. I will say that I suspect it's not clear, but I suspect we might not be doing a school street paving. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean we still can't do the the parking lot. Um, but we probably would save some money if we did it all at once. Mm -hmm. Have you have you talked, Mary, at all with Norm about that? I know at one time that was one of the paving projects we were yeah, considering. Yeah, we haven't. No, we haven't. Still on the list. Yeah, we haven't um, and I do have an email out to Pembroke so that we can understand how to deal with the maples. And I'm just waiting for that reply. Mm -hmm. That's the two Norway maples <coughs> on either side of the sidewalk? Correct. And one of which he feels is? He feels that both ha sustain so much Damage. Damage over the winter. Yeah. But this is where I sent the email back and I want clarification to make sure that I'm understanding this right. That it would take such extensive pruning because the lead, the leader branch is dead and rotted. It would be better to, to, to get rid of them. And I don't disagree with that. I mean, I, I think they should go, but that's a pretty big expense mm -hmm. and it leaves the school without any. Shade. But then his response was he felt like the tree committees would be able to. Yeah, they can plant something for, that little, for yeah. 50 years from now. Mm -hmm. But we did take out a tree already, <coughs> didn't we? Yeah, we took one out yeah. that was mm -hmm. here that was when we put that, when we did the sewer. And we talked about replacing that, so we probably should get, I feel like we should get those up and going, that mm -hmm. one at least. And mm -hmm. But then again, it's not like it's a do-nothing situation because there's a danger with those trees. Well, that's the thing. Right, exactly. And I'm not an arborist. I mean, I don't know how how uh, dangerous is it. I mean, so you call the tree wardens, probably, in the village. Mm. Right? Were they? Matthew. Oh, is the tree warden? And his, and his wife, Emily, I see. are the tree warden. Okay. But I know that that's a route you can... Mm -hmm. And also, mm -hmm. you probably should do that because sometimes people don't. And then they just cut trees and then it upsets them. Oh, yeah. We had a meeting last night. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll, Inside you. Okay. So we'll see what happens with that. Okay. If he can throw a number at full removal, did he do well, that? No, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what's that's what's pending is the reply email, and that's what we need to know. And I think also that I wasn't specifically clear about is how da how dangerous is the situation. Right. I mean, if well, once we know about it, yeah, and something happens, it's pretty dangerous. Right. Right. That's a good point. So right. Right. But a project like that, we'd have to get bids on. He can tell us what it would cost. Yep. You know, whereas the trimming, I think. We could we could do, but I don't. I guess we wouldn't have to do it. Does it meet the criteria? Of well, I think yeah. See what the, the, it comes yeah. in. Yeah. Exactly. Give him a nudge yep. and see if he'll give us a number. <coughs> well, the last time we had tree cutting, it was McRae. Yeah, uh, that or Greater Heights. I can't remember. That was McRae. Is that for over here or in the playground? Over there and out there. The, the maple tree in the playground. And everybody lamented the passing of. <coughs> okay. Um, what else do I have on the agenda? Not a whole lot. Act 46. Act 46, meeting. Section 10 discussion. Um, I forwarded minutes from. Mr. Bump, those are pretty good. Uh, I also had um, yeah, no. I gotta find it. Well, that's not it. 
Can you summarize? Um, I had a nice summary that I sent out as an email to you guys. Yeah, just look there. And yeah. I thought Is I had it sitting there. Yeah. Yeah, it's right there. Sitting on my virtual desktop. Yeah, my virtual desktop. Yeah. But I don't. I don't know if I can open it. Yes, I do. Well, I'll just go back to yeah, Richard Ben. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no, oh, do you need that right? I've got it right here. Do you want the minutes or do you want your email done? Uh, no, I'll just look at his minutes. I've got those. You got them. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're right here. But right there. there it is. I got, oh. I got it. Yeah. As soon as I got it, he was using the Well, yours is yeah. easier to read then. Um, so, Richard's uh, minutes, which I guess we'll be approving next month, are, as per usual, they're really comprehensive. thorough and comprehensive. And um, so he, he sets the context of the meeting and then uh, the context that the AOE participants provided for the meet the meeting and then um, I he he gives you a number of bullet points that I apparently made in my rambling discourse <laughs> and I, I do recognize them so um, the only thing I had a quarrel with was uh, about the comment about the mud statute expiring and I didn't intend to convey that I hoped hoped that uh, there would be a vote to leave that statute in the dust which is the way it seems to read to me right. I was actually saying I was hoping that it would be retained and if Bennington and Shasper so chose that maybe there'd be an arrangement where they could actually do what they voted to do. Anyway, um, otherwise, I think uh, it does convey fairly accurately what I tried to state during my uh, discussion, and then it ends up. And those are pretty well summarized in these bullet points that he put out there. Um, in fact, you know, they're, they're very well stated. I hope I was that clear when I was rambling on. Uh, <coughs> so, um, do you think I should read these? Or no. Just leave it alone. Mm -hmm. And then, so the, the final thing is next steps and uh, uh, Donna Russo Savage outlined these uh, for the Act 46 process that they'll finish meeting with all the districts who are <coughs> under Section 9, develop a, publish a draft of a statewide proposal by 6118 to send to the state board. They'll post it on the website. They will conduct public hearings on those proposals starting in July. Um, they will be in our part of the state in September for comment and those public hearings will provide opportunity for public questions and answers as well as other concerns, pros and cons. And then there will be a final report written and published uh, by the state board for October, the end of October and operational districts will become operational by 7-1 and 19. She uh, invited us to send any additional information and 
contact her with questions and concerns. And I think uh, this board probably has reason to do that. So I, I know we have we developed some additional material in pre preparing for this meeting. Uh, and I think there's probably more we can say to lay it out more explicitly and more finely and send it to them. So um, I think um, Tim, Tim has done us a favor by putting it on um, for all of us to look at and edit on the uh, Google Docs. I think uh, we should give ourselves a deadline of maybe by mid-May that we or by our next board meeting that we have something that we can either approve or correct and then send off to to them before the first of June. Uh, <clears throat> I've had uh, some contact with Florence um, Belknap in Arlington about it, and I sent her. Uh, well, I, I sent her the crazy that I sent around to everybody about what I thought my comments were, which I think jived pretty well with what Richard says they were. And uh, she's trying to get me the comments. Did you did you already have the comments from Arlington and Sandgate somehow? She said she was going to try to locate that for for us comments. to send to us. He had just, For they had met the just before 10. our last meeting and your wife okay. had heard something. Or, oh, yeah, yeah. But it wasn't. Um, nothing official. Yeah. <clears throat> just heard from someone these things. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully we'll, we'll get some sense of what they said on their behalves at, uh, with their own conversation with, under Section 10. And... Uh, it may be also worth noting that I read that the Arlington Board has changed significantly in March. Two, two new people were elected and a third person who had stepped down due to conflict with being an employee mm -hmm. is back on the board. And I don't know what that means in terms of how it affects their, their drive to further pursue this or not. <clears throat> well, maybe we should ask Florence to yeah. give us an idea. So uh, that's really about the last I have to say about this at the moment. I think uh, we pretty much laid out our Section 9 proposal in our annual, uh, our letter to the community for the annual meeting, and we said I don't think we said anything different here. We just uh, tried to come at it from a perspective of what's what's possible and what would it do for a final configuration that might interest them at the state. And one of those things is that it would reduce the number of boards between the two different SUs. <clears throat> but I don't know how Palmo, Woodford, Bennington, and Shaftesbury approached this discussion. Uh, I did look at Bennington's and Shaftesbury's Section 9 reports, which are essentially the, uh, the proposal that was put before the voters. That's what they... Consolidation. They, consolidation proposal. Mm -hmm. So I took that I, I took that into account when I was speaking because I thought that was a pretty good indication of what they wanted. Um, I have had conversations in the past with Nelson and Brownell and Palmo. Uh, not that he's on the Palmo board, but he's on the MAU board, and he's said that he thought for it would be better for his district is to be part of a union elementary district and I don't know what Woodford wants so. uh, they their voters have clearly spoken against joining the consolidation so perhaps they're they'd be interested in joining Palmo in uh, 
a union district. At any rate, I I put that forth as something that might be workable. So, well, but as I think it stands for all of us, uh, the the voters have spoken to some, and uh, the whatever is decided should be accommodated. Should accommodate their opinion. So. All right, uh, we skipped you, so we'll go back to the superintendent. I need those. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to write this. Um, I know it doesn't impact you directly, but I do have copies of the calendar that was sent into the state. Um, we do a by statute. We have to do a. Regional calendar, we meet with the Arlington Superintendent and the Creative Element Center. The regional calendar has to center around wherever there is a career development center. The students come from the county. So mm -hmm. the idea that particularly that we align vacations and school starts. So if a student is in two different school districts, they're not missing two weeks of school or a school vacation. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, draft eight of this calendar. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's not universally matched up with the other districts because not all districts do the same amount of student days or professional learning days, so that impacts it. The vacations are one. One change that we did is the wording in the last week of school because of uh, how many snow days we you know, normally put five snow days in and say that that's the last day of school if there's nothing there's 10 days blocked off that basically says that you know <coughs> that's a zone you should stay out of if you're planning a vacation to, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> so that's for informational the other piece and again it doesn't impact you is um, I'm asking every board this month that Shaftesbury did earlier tonight, and Bennington and Woodford did it last week to uh, end school the 22nd of June for students. Um, it, the value of education beyond that date in a hot June classroom <laughs> is just, and the students will meet. The state of Vermont requires 175 days. We do 180 days here. So they'll do 177 days by that date, the middle school will done 176 student days by that because they had one extra day off because of um, heating pipes had burst and that building wasn't usable that day, but the rest of the district was in school. And then the staff will come back that following week for professional learning activities to, to fulfill their obligation of how many days they have to work in order to receive a full salary. The other thing is um, from the SU meeting, um, the SU reps. Right. You, you were president of the last meeting, so I'll give you yes. copies of this. You can do with it if you want. That's from Dick Plants uh, that he read at the, uh, this is a proposal on, he had asked the SU board to take a stance against arming teachers, um, but the SU board decided that uh, one, it was not an agenda item, which is correct as far as the opening law goes, so it was they are going to pick a vote on it, probably should be on the agenda. So it got deferred, and then it was also thought by other SU members that it should go back to every board so that you can have a discussion about how you, have, you think your representative should vote on this if it comes up at a meeting. Um, you know. And uh, see, and in the meantime, I, again, I know this doesn't impact you as much, but I, I you all informed. Um, we have multiple searches open at the SU. I multiple what? Searches, searches. for administrators. Uh, Assistant Superintendent Donna Leap is leaving at the end of this year. I have that to fill. Still looking for a high school principal for MAU. We met with the MAU board earlier today to let them know that their second round of searches uh, still hasn't produced the amount of candidates that they need to fulfill the policy, the policy, the admin regs that go with the policy said that the screening committee should bring two, a minimum of two names forward. 
Uh, they're telling me that right now they, they don't have two names to bring forward to me after the second search, but uh, they do have another candidate that they'll be interviewing the week after vacation that may result in it. So I'm not going to have a third search. I will be looking for an interim principal again. Laura Boudreaux is doing it this year. She does not have an interest in doing it a second year. <laughs> so, uh, and um, what else? The, I also have a search for the director of HR open. Okay. And I received the resignation of the principal of Molly Stark. Um, so I also have that search going on. And this is a tough, you know, uh, he announced that to his when staff this happen? afternoon. He announced it to his staff this afternoon. Yeah. And uh, so we'll be posting that tomorrow. But we are extremely late in that process for finding yeah. an elementary principal, um, especially one with experience. They're probably already under contract. And if they're a Vermont educator, um, I can't hire them unless the other school district releases them from their contract. So that comp the process if we want an experienced uh, principal and the that's usual four. teacher. Hmm? That's four yeah. major positions. Yes, it is. Yeah. HR, um, high school principal, elementary school principal, and assistant superintendent, and athletic director. That's open to oh. Yes. Yeah, Tim oh, that's right, there. Tim Brown. Return. That's what we, they, they, they're coming to a, almost a final stage on that, so they have a screening committee that's been pretty active on that. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's 33 applicants. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's pretty good, pretty good interest. They screened that down to do eight interviews, which is more than candidates we had for the high school principal job. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people knocking on the doors for some of these jobs. So. I wonder why. <sighs> yeah. So, any questions for me? You're going to be busy. I am. And, uh, you know, I've enjoyed working with uh, Dr. Lee very much. She's, yeah. uh, I always felt that we were a good pair. Um, I consider an equal. And what I don't really feel would be my strength, particularly like grants management. Um, yeah, she did a good job, and that's a lot of detail that you know yeah. causes my eyes to glaze over. Mm -hmm. and, right, uh, and she doesn't really didn't really want to deal with you know, the boards. No offense, but yes, that was she liked being the assistant superintendent mm -hmm. when we had those right. conversations, and uh, yeah, so. And hmm. And I'm, I'm without her service right now because, uh, unfortunately, her mother died and she mm. is in Michigan right now, so she's not a little, uh, I wish her well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as do we. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got nothing. Any, um, where I guess we're going into other, anybody have another? Um. <clears throat> I was just thinking about one thing with the going back to the section nine report and the, mm -hmm. and the conversation. It seemed like they really wanted us to be taking some action. They, they said, "Why aren't why aren't you contacting your legislatures?" So I'm wondering if we maybe ought to do that. If we ought to mm -hmm. try to schedule some sort of <coughs> we, conversation. We have and. Okay. and multiple occasions <coughs> we did finally meet with uh, Alice Alice nobody else came they were all invited mm -hmm. um, it was a good meeting with Alice I thought pretty good yep but um, then we met with some of a, a couple reps up in the Arlington area yep so it's not that that it's that it's that there's some deaf ears okay right now with the closing of this legislative session that um, really to talk about Act 46 at any capacity is the third rail for any of these legislators. I, that's my opinion. 
Yeah. Well, you saw the pretty clear. She circled you saw that that letter from them. She was very clear. From uh, yeah. them and AOE personnel. Yeah. That they're committed to the schedule. How right. laudatory it was for them, but uh, you know, you got ninety plus districts that are sitting in Section Nine. And no Secretary of Education. And no Secretary of Education, and some question about whether we're looking for a business manager or a qualified Secretary of Education. Although he it's back been, on he back he, he yeah he backtracked he walked it back. But it, it's telling that he said it at all, mm -hmm. and it's telling that uh, I should keep my mouth shut. But it's telling that he has for two years running proposed things after everybody was pretty much set in concrete about their budgets right. that were to reduce costs further. Mm -hmm. And boards heeded the first call. And every time we talk to legislators, we tell them, we understand things might change, but give us a budget season heads up on it. Tell mm -hmm. them, you know, our course, budgets are done. And that's with some funding formula now. Yep. Well, la last night I listened to the VPR discussion of that with uh, Ansel and the other, there are two different committees, one Senate, one House, and then the, who's the budget director, is it? I, Brad, yeah. uh, not James, uh, the, he's in the cabinet. No, oh, okay, not from me. Yeah, right. Um, and it was a good discussion, but there's another change. It's not as big as what they originally talked about, but it's still another change. If they produce it and they override the veto, which there will be a veto of it. Which, what, of which? Uh, the change to taking, you know, to t getting like uh, $50 million through the, through, uh, Income tax. Oh, right, the change right. in the funding for A tenth of a percent surcharge proposal. And uh, it has implications for renters, most of whom are uh, qualify for renters' rebates, and uh, which they apparently have some provision to take care of, but the budget director didn't think it was adequate. The I don't know whether it was Ansel or the other, who's the other one, Ketchell? I forget. Um, <clears throat> thought it was okay, but um, if they change it, there's another change. And so people who left voting when they voted for budgets, thinking that they, they knew what their taxes would be, some of them may be finding that that's not true. And who knows about what they're going to do for the actual rate or the rate of uh, yield for the dollar because that hasn't been settled either. That's, kind of that's in this December. bill, on um, this bill. So to your point, you're right, we need to, but I think that our, our approach has been our legislators can't do a whole lot until the plan starts rolling out yeah. and they start seeing there's going to be a lot more political will to to, to approach some sort of uh, legislative fix to all these isolated and problematic districts uh, once, the, once the state is coming down and, lay, and trying to put out a plan because they don't know what it is either. And so to ask them to you know, hopefully we can get a number of legislators to look at the whole picture and come up with a way to allow a equitable fix for all those 90 districts that, or those that seem to need need something, as opposed to the state just forcing them into what, where they don't want to be. Um, I mean, we're, we're kind of fortunate in that they can't do that to us, but what they can do is in the, in the meantime, screw with what's been the will of the votes over in, in Bennington. 
<coughs> they have a lot less uh, protection. So, um, does anybody want to give me advice on this? My inclination is to support it. I support it fully. Yeah, same here. Me too. And uh, it comes from Dick France, who I think was, uh, from all he said, he was, you know, he was very much affected by his service in Vietnam. And uh, he, he really strongly believes we should not do anything like this. So. Basically, he's asking to follow the policy that you already have. Yep. Yeah. Right. He wants to emphasize it, though. So. Well, I hope they take that up as a as a full SU. And All right. I have one thing that's of real interest to it's kind of down my alley, but <coughs> after a recent partner meeting with the early education department at the SU, uh, um, as you all know, the um, the change, the reason why we changed our policy back to August 31 mm -hmm. is because of their change, and you've. I'm sure heard of this yeah. next proposal that's up there now that they're going to be discussing and that is to not subsidize they don't like the way I use that word but yeah. uh, to give them that universal subsidy to four-year-olds now and that four-year-olds instead should start kindergarten yeah, at four so that you will have two years of kindergarten kindergarten as a four-year-old kindergarten as a five-year-old course we, don't have that we have no I mean we would be okay um, here I think in our building but I mean talking to Megan and Kate and they're like what what do you where are we gonna put these children we're talking about well, aside children. from the capacity issue I think it's just developmentally a stupid approach and isn't that well, an about it's, face it's, to what they just yeah and that so that's now it's that's gonna cost more I mean, that's there now but I yeah. guess there's somebody in. Well, what does that do to the Congress? It's exactly. And it's. Yeah. Which it's supposedly when that go when they first enacted this, protecting the community partners exactly. was an important part of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now you're talking. We're going to put private businesses out of business. Mm -hmm. And, and now, exactly now they're going, going, they're going to do that. Happen. Which, and it's, frankly, it's that was my prediction of what was going to happen anyway, but I, I don't think it's a reasonable position for them to take. Well, I don't either, but it doesn't mean that they're not going to take it. Yes. Because it's now becoming very expensive, this this universal pre-K. So they want to slough it off on districts uh, through property taxes. And what's also really interesting about this is, be, is that um, uh, there aren't a lot of early educators out there. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference between early educator early education and K through six educate mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. th there's lots of reasons why this well, would the come up. originally had difficulty getting people who were certified so they'd be eligible for those vouchers. Absolutely. I mean they're, they're, they've got people stretched all over the place you know right. mentoring these early ed partners and so anyway it was quite a discussion and I've been following that pretty 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 closely mm -hmm. because that's a little. It's one of those proposals that came out of like the field. Like, really Sharp, sharp. wasn't it? Sharp, know, isn't that sharp. his name? Yeah. yeah. David um, Sharp. Yeah. And um, so anyway, I, I'll mm -hmm. keep you posted. But that's that's new and it's out there and it seems well to be pop. No, not at all. But. Well, if it's anything, a consolation. I believe Mr. Sharp is not running again in the fall. So. Well, they're into this right now, like, so we'll see what happens. Well, they're running out of time. Was That's this right. legislation or was it just It's a bill eating? proposed, oh, correct? It is a proposed bill. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Get out of the correct, but well, yeah, and this is just, I just learned. Well, stay on the, stay on the wall. New, mm -hmm. So I don't know, but you never know. That's the point, mm -hmm. <laughs> is that you never really know. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and the same thing, Ray, we have, I have the, we're full. Our pre-K is full for next year. We have a waiting list. Yep. And there's lots of four-year-olds in that <laughs> right now. Mm -hmm. So. Right, and if they, if they get thrust into kindergarten, 
you will have a problem. And would that yeah. be mandatory yeah. all of a sudden? <clears throat> it's so on. Um, it's isn't mandatory now, so. Right, oh, okay. right, exactly. But, but if, if they chose to, they get. Those four year olds. In the other, then they're either going to stay home or get or go on and get the full tuition, right. get full a full day. Why wouldn't right. you get a full day as a four, if, or not? Right, yeah. because that would be more exactly. appropriate from the development. Yeah. I know. <clears throat> Crazy making. Yeah. So. If there's some that I would argue that we shouldn't start kindergarten until later, mm -hmm. not earlier. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I make a motion that we. Adjourn. Yep. I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're done. Thank you. <laughs>